Okay, good morning, everybody. So I wanted to share a few things with you that really have come just come to life for me. And um, I hope they help you, especially in light of the fact that um, there's been a few people asking me uh, for Bob Larson's contact information, which means there, there are people ready to leave and uh, get saved. So praise God. Praise God. He's always moving. So um, here's what I would like to share with you. See, I understand from my own experience that the majority of the people that wind up, I say the majority, not all. We, we all have to understand this. Nothing is black or white. Nothing is all or nothing. Um, there are people who have made a conscious decision to follow Satan. And they're very happy doing what they do. Um, so not everybody, this is what I always say, and I learned this while studying narcissistic abuse, that we should not have idiot compassion for people. When people show you that they don't want to repent, you, you don't have idiot compassion for people. And so uh, the majority of the people that have wound up in the mystics community and the occult uh, were abused. No support uh, from the family um, were isolated most of their life and they're looking for God or they're looking for love or they're looking for family. And uh, very naive because we were isolated the majority of our life because the abusers from our family, um, they didn't want the, the people on the outside knowing what they were doing to us. So we were kept isolated, at least for me. I was beat like an animal and I was told that I better not ever tell anybody what happens in our house. So this is how the, mo uh, the majority of us grew up. And of course, we're, we're not getting anything from the Christian church or we were not getting anything from the Christian church because we weren't even in touch with ourselves. Um, we couldn't relate to people who had normal relationships with other people. We didn't know how to do that. And nobody cared enough to help us. And those are the facts. So these people out here can can uh, denounce us. We're like the misfits of society. Um, in fact, we are the chosen of society. And here's what I want to tell you. See, God works in mysterious ways. That's all I can say. So when, when these people out here, especially these people who present themselves as pastors out here. And what gives them away? I have to tell you this honestly. You've got to build up your discernment. What gives them away is their ego. How they look down on, on those that are broken. How they look down on those that are lost. And Jesus Christ himself has said these things. You know, anyone who ever abuses a child, um, you might as well throw yourself in hell because uh, understand that's where you're going. Any, anyone who, who abuses uh, the least of these will be turned away from Jesus Christ. And yet these people, that they're, they're Bible thumpers. They, they quote Bible verses all day, all night, yet they are not living what they are preaching. And that is very obvious to me. And, and how is this so? It's because you, you have to understand. You have all seen this with that terror demon over there. I have seen it with the tarot demon and with Nithya Nanda that I spent the whole year of my life every single day out here fighting for him. I was in such a delusion that if anyone ever said anything bad about him, I would go after them. I literally believed that he was an avatar, as they all said. Okay? And... You know, the dead giveaway is when they have people come out when people are telling the truth about them, when they have people come out in the public and tell how wonderful they are, that's your first clue that you're dealing with a fraud. When they come out and have their followers tell how wonderful they are, they're, they're totally in ego and it's all about them. If you've done any kind of studying of narcissistic abuse, you will see this immediately. The one thing that I can tell you is once you have an emotional connection to somebody, 
the devil puts the blinders over your eyes because he wants you to stay lost. So if you're following a false prophet, a false teacher, um, the devil will put the blinder over your eyes because he wants you to stay lost. So for you that are ready to leave, you have experienced exactly what I've just said. So you understand that every word I'm saying is the truth. Okay. Um, we have to understand that these people will, will, will start smear campaigns on us. will call us every name in the book. Um, uh, like that tarot demon did the other day. She, people who were speaking out against her, she was calling them Karens. No Karens full of hate belong here. Um, these people will never do any introspection. They will never look at themselves to see what their own shortcomings are and to repent. This is a dead giveaway that you're dealing with a fraud. Now, how many years have you all been hearing me say and actually show you the smear campaign that that tarot demon made on me? She's never once apologized. She's never repented for anything she has ever done. And it's always everyone else's fault. This is a dead giveaway that you're dealing with a fraud. Okay? So I want you to understand that when you, when you leave the mystics community, you will be attacked by people from the mystics community and the occult, and you will be attacked by Christians, so-called Christians. I call them the fake Christians because they're not Christ-like in any way, shape, or form. You will start to build up discernment. And here's what I have really been shown. Uh, the last few days... See, Bob Larson gave me an, an assignment to do. He told me to sit with the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to show me whatever I needed to know about my family, my life, why this demon is here, uh, the whole bit. And that's exactly what I've been doing. The Holy Spirit has showed me everything. So what I have learned is that I still, even after all the abuse I have been through, I still want to see the best in people. And I have an expectation still that when, when someone says that they're a pastor, that they are godlike, that they have walked through the fire and they are a pure shining diamond that is glowing with the light of Jesus Christ. And that is not the case. Even I, after all I have been through, still have not learned this lesson. And this is what has gotten me every single time. So the biggest thing that the Holy Spirit showed me was, is that there are people out here using God's house as a business. And no, that's not what he wants. Remember in, in, in the Bible, Jesus turned over the, the table of the money changers in the temple. Is That is definitely not what God wants. You see, it's all about the only reason we we're here is to wake up and to fully know who we are in Jesus Christ. It's the only reason why we're here. And we have to be able to get to the heart. We have to be able to get to the heart because this is where he is. See? So, um, and this is what I'm expecting to see from these pastors out here. And I'm not seeing it. And it's so disheartening to me. It's like nothing is as it's supposed to be. And, and really, I was just going to say, who says it's supposed to be anyway? That goes back to my teaching from this Sargadatta. But it is supposed to be a certain way. Who said? Jesus said. Jesus said. And, uh, yeah, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Um, and it got me, it got me really, uh, downtrodden here, but what happens, you know, you've always heard me say from, from this whole time on this path that nothing happens by accident and everyone who's supposed to be in your life is put here to help fulfill the process of you waking up to help you learn the lessons you're supposed to learn. And nothing is an accident. So 
although the process is excruciatingly painful as we peel away this personhood, this old skin, this uh, this selfishness, this um, this this us that that Satan has controlled our whole life. We're peeling that away so that we can be that beautiful, brilliant diamond in Jesus Christ. It is a painful process, and um, if we understand that God is working for our good, for our betterment for us to wake up, to be in oneness with him. And I'm telling you, I'm to the point now that although I'm still feeling the pain of what's happening here, I'm feeling God's love like I've never felt before in my life. And I mean that, I mean that in every way possible. Uh, and it's, it's where it's supposed to be. It's in my heart. I don't have to think about God loves me. God. No, I'm feeling it in my heart. Um, that I know that I had to go through all this because of all the abuse I was in. I I would never have been able to feel him in my life. It would have all been head knowledge. It would have never been heart knowledge. I had to be put through this. And this is all for his glory. As it's turning out, what am I doing? It's all for his glory. Do you understand? So this is how you can tell how, how to help you with your discernment. When you see these pastors or gurus or anybody out here making their followers get up and tell how wonderful they are, uh, understand that the followers are still in the sleep because they don't understand it's not about that pastor. It's not about that guru. It's only about you knowing who you are through Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, the other thing is constantly telling about what they're doing in the world, where they've been in the world, how they've traveled all over the world, um, what, uh, what, um, where they're sending money to all over the world. You see, this is all works. This is all in, in, in the Bible. You've got to read the Bible to understand this stuff. This is all in the Bible. You know, uh, Jesus said, you know, pray in your prayer closet because when you pray out in the in the for the public, that's all the blessing you're going to get because God doesn't want to hear that because you're putting on a show. Okay, pray in your prayer closet. What you do for charity, you do in private. It's not so that you can get a pat on the back of how wonderful you are. When you see stuff like this, that should be a red flag. That really should be a red flag because it's all ego. And this person, although, listen, every single gift that, that, that God has given to anybody out here, he will never take away from them. He will never take away from them. And Satan can also replicate every gift with the exception of casting out demons. Satan cannot cast any demon out from his own kingdom. He can't do it. So other than that, the, the devil can speak in tongues. The devil can heal the sick. The devil can do everything, every gift that the, these uh, pastors can do, the devil can do. And the third thing that I want to um, share with you that was shown to me by the Holy Spirit was the fact that these pastors out here were, were calling me a demon and a witch and using God's word to do that. That is the, the that's vile, that's unforgivable. And these are all red flags that were shown to me by the Holy Spirit that you all have got to be alert to when you see stuff like this, no matter how, how good they speak, no matter how many Bible verses they quote, you have to understand this is how we fell prey to these gurus over there. They were very, they're very charismatic. They spoke very, very well. And we, we fell prey to them. You have got to build up your discernment. Okay. So this is what I was shown. And um, these are the things that you have to look for. Now, oh, now that I've explained this to you, I want you to look back at the tarot demon's behavior and at anybody else's behavior that you are aware of. And see now that you're pulling away and that you're coming out. If you can see it, 
And that is your first clue that you are beginning to wake up. Okay. So the, the next thing that I want to speak to you about is if you were lied to and you were told that opening the third eye was your way to speak to God. Um, I want you to understand that, that you were absolutely lied to. This is how these demons get in. That is a direct portal to the cosmos. And I want you to understand from the, from the Bible's, uh, from the Bible's word that there are, there are uh, three heavens that, that I've learned about so far. The third heaven is where God himself resides. The second heaven is above the atmosphere of the earth, in the clouds, in the space, in the, what what uh, the mystics and the occult calls the cosmos. It's all demons. That's where the demons reside. That is known as the second heaven. And the first heaven is the atmosphere of the earth. Okay? Anything below the third heaven is Satan's realm. So even these people in the mystics community that are that are all um, excited and interested in these aliens understand the Bible only speaks about angels and demons, um, these, these, and, and that demons can shape shift. It's all demonic. This is why it's imperative that you get out, get out now. So if you had done any meditation to open your third eye, to still the mind and open your third eye, listen, it doesn't matter what your intention was. I sit here and I say, I only wanted to be in oneness with God. I never went to, to study Satanism or, or have powers to hurt people. Uh, I never did that. Satan doesn't care about your motives does not care about your motives. You open the door, he will walk in with seven of his friends. And that's exactly what has happened. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you uh, food for thought here. And of course you need to build up your own relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, I, I, I say that I say the Trinity because I pray to all three, you know, I revert back to my my beginnings, uh, which was Catholicism. And when I pray, I say, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And to me, nothing is outside the Trinity. Okay. So um, one of the first things that I did when I started, um, when I was first brought back to the Bible and I started watching these mass deliverance videos, uh, was I repented to Father God that I'm, I'm getting ready to choke up, so bear with me. And we're all going to have to do this. I want you to understand, this is why I'm telling you this. I repented from my heart to Father God that I went looking for him. I went to a demon looking for him. And, uh, even when I say that, it, it just feels so vile. It feels so vile. So, um, I repented of that. And as you can tell, it's still bothering me. The demons don't care about what your intention was. But I know that God knew my heart. And uh, he, he knew everything I went through. And uh, th this was what I had to go through to wake up. And, uh. I have, in fact, repented of all of this, and I know I'm forgiven. Um, I need to let go of it myself. See, these things are still helping me. I need to let go of this myself. I need to forgive myself for this. It's not that it, that it was all lost. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from Miss Argonata. Uh, so much that it, it has helped me uh, interpret the Bible like I was never able to before. So it wasn't all lost. But this one aspect here is so grotesque to me.
that I went to a demon looking for God. And uh, this is the importance of reading the Bible, because if we don't know what God's word says, we don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll be led, we'll be misled by everybody out here. So we have to do the work. We have to. We have to want to know God more than we want our next breath. So um, whatever in your own words, from your own heart, you have to repent to the Lord that you went to a demon looking for him. And uh, you're sorry. You're so, so, so sorry. The next thing that I want to share with you is um, if, you're, if your third eye has been opened, if your third eye has been opened, um, you sit down and when you're, when you're, when you're doing your repentance, um, you close that door, say, I close this door to the third eye and I seal it shut with the blood of Jesus Christ. Keep saying it, keep saying it. And this is why I kept saying that for us, the, uh, mass deliverances are not good. Um, and of course, all of these ego driven pastors got offended by that, but they obviously have never dealt with, uh, serious demons. This is why I tell you all to go to Bob Larson and nobody else, Bob Larson or bust. Um, you know, the mass deliverances are good for people who have like anger, fear. And I, I suggest that you do them because we have all these things especially if you've been abused, we have the anger, the fear, the, the isolation, the, the generational curses. These are all things that we have to break and get rid of. I got rid of another demon last night. I lost count. I lost count. The highest one that I heard of that I saw from a woman online, she had 52 demons in her. Now you've got to think about all the lifetime of abuse that we've been in. If you're in a state of anger or a state of rage, that is a door, that is a portal that is left open for demons to enter you. So you have to understand, we have many, many demons going on here. So last I counted was, I think, 26. So now it might be 27, 28. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how many's in here. I'm just going to keep doing it until I feel completely opened. Um, but another one was, was uh, released last night. This is why I said the mass deliverances are not good for us. I didn't say that we're not good. They're not good for us. Um, because we have such powerful demons in us, because we have been in the uh, mystics community or the occult, Bob Larson is it. And I will put Bob's uh, email address in the description again for anyone who wants it, who sees this. I also want you to understand that the Nithian and the goons are stopping your comments from showing up on this page. So um, I will get a video from my other page. It's under the same exact name as this page because they were blocking me from uploading videos to this page. So I made another page with the same exact name. I'll get a video with that link so you can have both the pages if you want to write me. Um, some people wrote me on the other page and I guess they're deleting it so the Nithian and the goons won't see it. Um, it's terrible that they're doing this. I, I, I wish they would just go away. Um, or you can email me and understand whatever you email me, they are hacked into all of my emails. They are seeing everything. So I would suggest that unless it's something that you really need to ask me, that you don't email me. I would ask that you, if you really have a, a serious question about deliverance, that you email Bob Larson. Okay. I want you to get the help. It's the only reason why I'm here. I want you to get the help. I want you to save your eternal life. For most of us, before we've woken up, we don't, we don't really think of eternal life as real as it really is. Uh, we think of it as, a, as another story that we learned about in church. It is more real than this 3D world is. So please understand that there's been many descriptions of people that have been shown hell and it's amazing. They all come back with the same description. 
the same description. It is not a place that we ever want to be. And uh, unfortunately, that tarot demon has sent herself there as she has blasphemed the Holy Spirit, I don't know how many times already, and mocked Jesus Christ by what she's doing and then making paintings of Jesus Christ and the angels. Understand Satan will show up as an angel of light. He does nothing but try to mock Jesus Christ. This is why our discernment is our number one priority. So you've got to understand what you're seeing in pastors. You have to understand what your own expectations are when you see people. And if you're one that likes to make excuses for people or give people a pass when they have bad behavior, then you're going to wind up with another abuser or another fake teacher. That's all I'm going to say. You have got to, you've really got to work on yourself. It's not all about looking outside of you. That's not what it's about. That's not what it's ever been about. It's about looking inside of yourself and healing inside of you what is broken so that you can get in oneness with Jesus Christ. And in, in that process, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be given to you. That is God's one of God's promises for us. I will put that video again of God's promises in the description for you. You know, the, the only regret that I have is, is that I went to a demon looking for God. Um, I could sit here and beat myself up from morning till night about how my whole life has turned out. You must understand uh, uh, about generational curses and there were, there were uh, spiritual forces at play in all of our lives. And although these pastors out here do deliverance, they don't seem to understand that while they're calling us witches and demons. They don't seem to understand that. This is how you can understand that they are not awake. As much as they want to think they're awake, they are not awake. Um, there's been very few people out here, and I will give you some names for you to look at. There's Bishop T.D. Jakes to watch. Prophetess Maddie Nottage to watch. Um, Dan Moeller to watch. Todd White to watch. Um, Joel Osteen to watch. Um, and of course, Bob Larson. You definitely want to watch Bob Larson. Okay. Um, I'll put their names in the, I'll put everything in this, in the description for you guys here so that you will have it. Understand the focus never changes. The only thing, the, the main focus that you have to do is to heal your broken pieces. And the only way that you can do that is by going inside and connecting with the Holy Spirit or Jesus Christ. If you have never been baptized uh, as an adult, well, just, just picture Jesus Christ here in your inner space and connect with him. And there will come a day when you will get the nudge that, that you should be baptized, that this is the right thing for you to do. Jesus will guide you every step of the way. And this, I promise you, understand you've been guided every step of the way. And Jesus has never left you. You understand, I, I don't really care what anybody says out here. We are all God's children. God understands absolutely the forces that are at play here. This is why no matter what, no matter how many demonic attacks I was under, every time I called out to God, I was comforted every single time. So this is not about religious superiority. This is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. This is all this is about. So um, I, I bought a book last night, 100 Nighttime Prayers for Women. I, I'm just going to read one page of it now for you. It says, my God, I will give them hearts that recognize me as the Lord. Perfect. I just opened it up to this page. They will be my people. I will be their God. Uh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You guys are not going to believe this. 
I will give them hearts that recognize me as the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their God for they will return to me wholeheartedly. Amen. Jeremiah 24, 7. <laughs> Can you believe that? Here's the prayer. Oh Lord, my God, give me a clean heart. Purify my thoughts and feelings. Help me to remember that you are my God and I am your child. You have chosen me from the beginning of time. You have ordained me as your own and marked each of my days as blessed. I am never alone, never wandering, never forsaken. I always have my God. I always have you on my side. When I consider all the paths my heart has taken, some desolate and disappointing, I realize that every time I turn right back to you, you take me back into your arms. <laughs> wow. You welcome me, for I am not a stranger to you. I am known fully and yet loved completely by you. I am yours. And praise Jesus, you are mine. Hold me tight, Heavenly Father. Remind me tonight that you are my God. May I always return to you wholeheartedly. Amen. You guys, can you believe that? This is how God works. This is how God works. This summarized this whole video, and I just randomly opened up to this page. This is how God works in our life all the time. And we have to connect to him. Okay. So I hope this helps a lot of you. Um, if your third eye is open, please close that door, seal it tightly with the blood of Jesus Christ. and Do not ever open it again. Okay. I hope you're all blessed. Um, do the introspection. I hope you're doing the, the mass deliverance videos. And at least getting rid of the little demons until you're able to meet with Bob Larson. And um, every single minute of every single day, I'm constantly, I'm constantly saying hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And my inner voice is saying that. It's either saying hallelujah or thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what I'm doing throughout the day, my inner voice is saying either one of those things. Because I've said it so often. You understand? Get to that place. Get to that place. No matter what you're going through, your inner voice is always praising God. That's where we want to be. Okay, you guys? You have a blessed day.